Now at 6, our Matt Mulcahy is in Newtown, Connecticut and has a live report from the community coming up. And new details emerging on Friday's deadly shooting, including the latest autopsy results. Plus, the DeWitt Police Department has a virtual program that allows them to respond quickly weather. and efficiently to school shootings and other crises. I'm Dora Scheidel. I'll tell you how this new technology can save lives coming up. From CNY Central, this is the News at 6. Now in enhanced widescreen. Good evening, I'm Katie Carrada. We continue to follow the latest developments in Friday's shooting in Newtown, Connecticut. Our Matt Mulcahy is there tonight and we'll have a live report coming up a little later on in the show. But first, we want to bring you the latest details on what we've learned today, including President Obama's arrival in Newtown within the hour. Jay Gray has more now from Connecticut. And I just Lord, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine. And we're just devastated. Heartache that has so many this Sunday turning to their faith. We can always pray for the goodness of people to just come out and, and try to bury this evil that's happened and hug our children a little better. Thousands continue to be drawn to this grieving community looking for the strength that comes in being together. And this afternoon, President Obama joins them, meeting privately with first responders and the families of the victims, then speaking publicly at a multi-faith memorial service. As so many struggle through so much pain, investigators continue their work. It's going to take many, many man hours okay, to attempt to draw this picture together, to put this puzzle together. Police have now confirmed that Adam Lanza shot his way into Sandy Hook Elementary with a semi-automatic rifle, that he also carried two high-powered pistols and several multi-round clips of ammunition, hundreds of bullets. A final report from the medical examiner shows that his mother, Nancy, died from multiple gunshot wounds and that Lanza's death has been ruled a suicide. And investigators are now actively seeking out individuals they say are involved in a series of false and malicious posts online. Anyone that harasses, threatens, or intimidates, or interferes with the investigation, utilizing any social media of any type relative to this horrific crime, uh, will be fully investigated and fully prosecuted. SWAT teams today surrounded a local church during noon mass after what they termed a threatening phone call, which turned out to be a hoax, but still forced mourners to evacuate. A momentary pause to a grieving process that right now seems to have no end in sight. And that was Jay Gray reporting. As victims and their families are trying to come to terms with the deadly school shooting, so is the family of the gunman. Lanza's father, Peter, Peter Lanza, Lanza, issued a statement on the tragedy. He said, quote, our hearts go out to the families and friends who lost loved ones and to all those who were injured. Our family is grieving along with all those who have been affected by this enormous tragedy. No words can truly express how heartbroken we are. We are in a state of disbelief and trying to find whatever answers we can. We too are asking why. We have fully cooperated with law enforcement and will continue to do so. Like so many of you, we are saddened but struggling to make sense of what has transpired. Autopsies are now complete on Adam Lanza and his mother, Nancy. The medical examiner says Nancy Lanzi Lanza died from multiple gunshot wounds to the head. Police believe her son Adam shot his mother before heading to the elementary school. The medical examiner says Adam Lanza died from a self-inflicted single gunshot wound to the head. And Pope Benedict prayed for the victims of the Newtown massacre today. The pontiff spoke in English to express his grief and urged the faithful to dedicate themselves to prayer and peace. Pope Benedict then greeted thousands of children assembled in St. Peter's Square, a tradition that happens the third Sunday of Advent. And now meteorologist Mike Brookins is here now with a first look at your forecast. Mike. 
Katie, we've got temperatures above average, and that's why we've got some rain falling in Syracuse right now. There's the Stanley Law Sky Watch looking live over Syracuse. So I've got my umbrella. You'll need it this evening, and there is a chance in some spots that this rain is going to fall into areas where the temperatures at 32 degrees or below, meaning freezing rain. And there are some winter weather advisories hosted for a couple of our counties, St. Lawrence and Herkimer County, well to the east and northeast of Onondaga County. For the bulk of us, we are going to see just rainfall with temperatures staying above freezing in the mid and upper 30s for a while this evening. There may be some brief pockets of freezing rain in Jefferson, Lewis, Oneida and Otsego counties as well. But for the most part, it's going to be those two counties under the advisory. And we do have some rain showers moving through Syracuse right now. A break over the Finger Lakes and then more coming in from the southwest. Our temperature right now is at 40 degrees. We fall to 39 and then maybe go up with the wind out of the southeast. Quite breezy at times this evening with these passing rain showers. More rain for tomorrow. There is some snow in my seven days, so make sure, make sure you steer, stick around for that. Back inside. Thanks, Mike. Happening now, our Matt Mulcahy is in Newtown, Connecticut, taking a look at the very latest on how the community is coping with Friday's tragedy. He joins us now with the latest. Matt, good evening. Well, Katie, what a, what a busy day it's been here in Newtown, Connecticut, in Sandy Hook, the hamlet. Uh, my first impressions as I came in here today were one of how solemn it instantly becomes when you get anywhere near the center of town. People are walking the streets with flowers in hand, teddy bears in their arms, uh, and, and not concerned at all about how far they have to walk to get to a place where they can pay proper respects to the victims of this. Now, of course, the big news at the moment is the president. He's here at Newtown High School talking with these grieving families, uh, a public memorial service. He arrived at Hartford Airport, had to be part of a motorcade down Route 84 to get here uh, late in the day today. In fact, some of the people that are part of the reporting compound here got stuck because roads got shut down by area police and also the Secret Service, of course, who's handling tight security as the president makes his visit here. He'll be out of town as quickly as he can wrap up at the memorial service and move on as he uh, mourns with the entire country. One of the experiences I had as, as we continue to think about what happened on Friday is talking with some of the people that were here today out of no other reason other than a, a draw that they felt to come to the area. I talked to one father who brought his wife and two young children. They parked, they had to walk about a mile to get to the uh, Sandy Hook Fire Department, that familiar spot which you've seen on television, which is right near the school where all this took place. And I talked with the father because I saw that he was, he was shedding tears as he's looking at this row of 27 Christmas trees, one for each of the victims of this terrible tragedy at the hands of the shooter on Friday morning. And there he was with his 9-year-old girl, his 11-year-old son, who each had something to put on one of those Christmas trees, whether it be a flower or a teddy bear, which has become a popular symbol here. And the father and the mother and the children, they were, all, they were all weeping. And the only reason they came was he just felt compelled. He was in the region. He lives in Boston, but he has family here in Connecticut. And he really felt that sense that he couldn't go back home without coming here and teaching his children a lesson of how important it is to remember such a terrible time in the, our nation's history. He also pointed out something which I thought was very poignant. He says, it just doesn't feel right to celebrate Christmas. And he thought the best way to celebrate Christmas was by coming here and paying his respects. We'll continue our coverage from here, bring you more on our station, and also uh, some photos and other ideas that I've come up with and thoughts that we'll share on our Facebook and Twitter as well. Katie. Thank you, Matt. What an what a incredible day there. And thank you so much for going live for us on such short notice. Well, here in central New York, many have come together to remember the shooting victims one of those vigils is happening right now in Waterloo on Main Street under the Streetlight Angels. A vigil was also planned in Syracuse's Clinton Square for tomorrow, but event organizers have now postponed it. The city says it needs more time to plan the logistics for a vigil. Information on a rescheduled date will be posted on our website and Facebook page. Well, Friday's tragedy leaves a big question, especially for parents. What can we do to make sure this doesn't happen to our kids in our schools? Our Dora Scheidel looked at a new system DeWitt police are using to keep people a little safer. Dora? 
Katie DeWitt is the only police department in central New York to adopt a virtual program which provides a 3D look into every public and private school in town. This innovative technology could help first responders respond even faster. The, third de the 360 degree virtual tour is available to all officers, including inside their patrol cars. It's a much more detailed look than the standard floor plan used by most agencies and school districts. Police Chief Eugene Conway says the new technology makes sure first responders are familiar with the building the minute they arrive on scene. That information is vital to the first responders who arrive there not knowing where the uh, suspect may be or where the victims may be. The program is not expensive but is somewhat labor intensive since it requires taking photos of every inch of the building and then piecing them together. But with changes in technology, that's becoming easier. For instance, most new smartphones allow you to take panoramic photos. Nobody would ever be able to prepare themselves for the horror first responders saw on Friday. But tools like this can make planning a little easier. Katie? Coming up at 11, coming up a local gymnastics team doing what they can to help out a local, a local charity. We'll tell you what they did with that school bus earlier today.